Now it's time for the ultimate application with a white chocolate cranberry mousse tart. This uses a piped chocolate mousse as part of a greater dessert. So let's start by making that white chocolate mousse. I've got eight ounces of white chocolate here. And white chocolate is the most delicate in the chocolate family. To this, I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter. By weight, that's an ounce. Instead of melting the white chocolate with the butter on its own, I'm going to make a pastry cream. I'll strain the pastry cream directly on top of the chocolate and let the pastry cream melt the chocolate gently. To make this pastry cream, I start with a cup and a quarter of milk and I've heated it to just below a simmer. I have three egg yolks and I'll add to that three tablespoons of sugar. And also, to help thicken the pastry cream, two tablespoons of cornstarch. Okay, and now that my milk is just below a simmer, I can just start seeing the bubbles break the surface, I can temper the milk in. And that simply means that I'll whisk these ingredients together and then gradually pour in the milk until it's evenly incorporated. Once you've got it about half added, then you can really add the milk all at once. I'll return the mixture to a medium heat and keep whisking it until it thickens up. It takes about two to three minutes for the pastry cream to thicken. And there we go. Now before I pour this over the chocolate and butter, there's one last ingredient to add. Two teaspoons of powdered gelatin, and I've softened it in three tablespoons of cold water. As you add the gelatin, you'll see the texture of the pastry cream change. It'll actually become quite fluid. That is to be expected. And now, I'll pour this on top of the chocolate. And I'll stir gently, just letting the heat of this pastry cream melt the chocolate. As you can see, this is beautifully satiny and smooth. While that cools a little bit, I can start on the crust for the tart. I'll measure in a cup and a half of chocolate cookie crumbs. And I have a quarter cup of butter that I've melted. I'll just stir this so that the cookie crumbs are coated with the butter. This is very much like making the crust for a cheesecake. And the perfect pan for this tart is a nine inch removable bottom pan. Makes the tart easy to take out and it's ungreased. Pour the crust into here and press it along the bottom and up the sides. When pressing a crumb crust into a shell. I like to press it up the sides first and then flatten the bottom. The crust has to bake now for 10 minutes in a 350 oven that I've preheated. While the tart crust bakes, I can make the cranberry compote. Quite simply, I start with two cups of fresh cranberries. You can also use frozen. Cranberries are loaded with natural pectin that sets up the compote, kind of the way jelly sets. So it does actually take a half a cup of water to achieve the right consistency of compote. I'll start this simmering and add two thirds of a cup of sugar. And a little bit of finely grated orange zest. It takes about 20 minutes for this compote to cook. And after the 10 minute mark, you can pull the cookie crust from the oven. Don't expect any change in color or texture. It just needs that 10 minutes to set. And just a little more time to cool, but that's perfect because I need 10 more minutes on my cranberry compote to make sure all these cranberries pop. You can see how much the compote has thickened. To finish it off, I like to add a splash of vanilla, about a teaspoon, and entirely optional, I'll add two tablespoons of brandy. I don't add the brandy or vanilla at the beginning. It would simply evaporate off and you'd have no flavor left. And you want to cool down to room temperature, the cranberry compote, then chill it completely before you assemble the tart. My mousse base has cooled completely, so it's ready to finish. I've whipped a cup of whipping cream and now it's ready to fold in. 
Unlike the other chocolate mousse recipes that had egg whites folded in at the very end, this one I rely solely on the whipped cream. But since it's so fluid, you actually have to chill it down before you pipe it. I have a chilled cranberry compote and a chilled mousse. And now my crust is cooled so I can assemble the tart. Now take a look at the mousse and how it has set. You can actually cut it with a knife. This truly is a mousse designed to be used as a filling for cakes and tarts. I'm going to put half of the mousse into the bottom of the tart shell and spread it out evenly. I think the combination of the white chocolate mousse and the cranberries is brilliant because you've got the sweetness inherent in white chocolate plus the natural tartness of cranberries that balance each other out. This gets put into the middle and I'll spread it to make it a little more level, but I wanna keep it towards the center. Now the last step, piping the mousse to decorate the outside of the tart. I have a piping bag fitted with a star tip. You can just see by this consistency that the mousse is so much firmer than the milk chocolate or the dark chocolate mousse that I made. I think a scallop design suits the elegance of the tart. And to do that, I'm going to make little curls, moving the piping tip back, then up and over itself to give that scalloped edge, turning the wheel as I go. And then, to create a variety in texture, I switch directions and pipe counterclockwise. And there we go. The tart is complete. What a showstopper. Now you do have to let this set. Give it at least an hour in the fridge before you slice it and serve it. I have a tart that's already chilled. See how easily it pops out of the pan? And then just take your offset spatula, loosen that lower crust, slide the bottom part of the pan out. And now you have a tart that is ready to serve. What a beautiful use for mousse.